when you settle in with the breath, you're trying to create a home for the mind, a place where it feels at ease, where it's protected. So give yourself a sense of ease with the breath. Experiment to see what kind of breathing feels good for you right now. It might be long breathing or shorter breathing, faster, slower, heavier, lighter, deeper, more shallow. There's lots to experiment with. And you can experiment with your focus. You can focus at the tip of the nose. You can focus at the middle of the chest, down at the navel, anywhere in the body where you feel the breath. Because the breath here is, we're not talking about so much the air coming in and out through the nose, but the movement of energy through the body. And that affects the whole nervous system. So settle in. Make some adjustments so that this house you have here becomes a home. And as I said, it's also protected. You have a clear sense of where you want your mind to be right now with the breath. So any other thought that comes up that's not related to the breath, you can just put aside. No matter how interesting it may seem or how compelling, you have to tell yourself, I've got more important things to do right now. I've got to develop this skill of creating a home wherever I am. That's the good thing about the breath, that wherever you go, it's there with you. You can always make it your home. And it's right next to the mind, of the parts of the body, the aspects of the body. The breath is when you feel most immediately. So take time to settle in. And have, as I said, have a clear sense that anything that's not related to the breath right now is none of your business. And it has no business coming in to interfere. The affairs of the world may be screaming at you. But just let them scream, but you don't you have to take them inside. You can close the windows, close the doors. And John Lee makes this point, that you have a sense of restraint over what you look at, what you think about, what you listen to. It's like having windows and doors that you can open and close to your house. So good things come to the door, okay, let them in. If bad things come to the door, you don't have to let them in. As for bad things inside you, you don't have to let them out. Because when they go outside, they get food and they get stronger and stronger. If you keep them inside, you can starve them. All your unskillful mental qualities. Keep them down in the basement. And even though we have a precept against killing, allowing these things to starve is not doesn't count as killing. And it's actually a gift to yourself and a gift to the people around you. So you have a good neighbor policy. So keep looking after this house. Make it your home. And when you have a home like this, then you feel secure wherever you go. You feel that you have a good, solid foundation inside. When we go through the world without this sense of foundation, we go running for trying to find what other people are thinking about us, what other people are saying about us, what they can say to, to us that make us feel good. In other words, we're looking for a nourishment, we're looking for a protection outside, in a place that's not likely to give it. The world can be very fickle. So you can't really depend on things outside. You've got to learn how to depend on yourself inside. You've got to deal with the fickleness of your own mind. And you start out by giving it a good place to stay. When it feels secure and at home, it's going to behave a lot better. And you're going to have a sense of really belonging right here.